Hey guys, this is Adrian, and I'm going to show you how to easily set up your um, CSS and JavaScript uh, asset files using your own uh, asset pipeline inside AVO. So you could, you this this is a feature from version one, so you could have done that, uh, but you only, the only difference is that you had to manually uh, add those uh, file, files yourself. But now, we created uh, two commands that will help you generate these files and help, help you get started very fast. So first of all, I want to do like an overview of what uh, the asset pipeline um, situation is right now. So basically we support uh, all the major um, asset pipelines, so import map, prop shaft or sprockets. We support Webpacker as well, but only together with prop, uh, Sprockets or PropShaft. So you, we need one of these two to actually be able to serve the files. You can uh, have them uh, uh, compiled by Webpacker, but we need the, them to be served by PropShaft, PropShaft and Sprockets. I personally, uh, personally uh, maintained an application uh, that had Webpacker and Sprockets for many years, so everything went just fine, so you can do that. Uh, so there are two things that we need to mention when we talk about assets. So we have the Avos assets and your custom assets. So um, when we package Avo, we chose to uh, package, compile and package all of those assets um, when, when we push it to RubyGems. So this way you are not impacted by any of our pipeline um, choices. So before we used Webpacker, so you had to have like Node.js and everything else, but we chose to package them ourselves and just ship them with the gem. And so you don't have to worry about it. So you don't have to have like a Node.js environment and every, everything else. Since then we moved to ES build and uh, we, did, we kept the same thing. Uh, we're packaging the assets ourselves. So whenever you do a deploy, whenever you have like a, a, a assets precompile command, Avos assets will not be get compiled, so uh, they 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 just get ignored and they'll just get served in the final production application. On your custom assets, you may be using one of these um, pipelines like import map, prop shaft, and sprockets. Um, so you may want to add some things like maybe the Tailwind CSS or other styling styles or just utility classes. Or you maybe you want to add some JavaScript and add your own stimulus controllers or other things that you have prepared for your app. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's start with Tailwind uh, CSS utility classes. So I'm going to, uh, so this is empty. So I'm going to do Rails uh, new Tailwind CSS. Uh, I'm going to use prop shaft and CSS uh, and the Tailwind framework for the CSS. So now, it will install everything for me. Perfect. And now whenever you install Tailwind CSS, it, you'll have this, um, you'll, you should have, do we have it? Let's just, yep. Rail 7 will have this bin dev command. And this bin dev command will actually let me show you. We'll actually uh, use this proc file and we'll run these two commands. So rail server and the Tailwind CSS watch uh, command. So now if we visit localhost 3000, this is a fresh new app. Next, I'm going to install Avil. So I'm going to use the app template from Rails Bytes. Okay, and run the server again. Actually, let's run it with the bin dev command. Okay, and now if I go to Avo, I should have Avo installed. Perfect. Uh, so let's try and do something. Let's go, and this is something that a customer uh, came to us and said uh, they have this problem. So let's do uh, Rails generate Avo eject and eject the logo partial. So now I'm going to go into the logo partial. So now I am basically updating this partial right here. Um, in my own um, app, in my own parent app. And let's say this is a contrived example, but let's say I want to use, uh, I want to set some margins of maybe 100 pixels, right? Or maybe let's say just 
MX10. And let's uh, refresh. And if I go here and you see the, the class has been added, but now if I look for it, uh, we'll see that we don't have it available. So that's because all of the classes that we used for tail with uh, uh, for Avo with Tailwind, so uh, something like PX4 or Z50 or whatever, these have been uh, whitelisted and this have been compiled in our own CSS file that you see here with all these assets. But we never used MX10, right? If I use MX12, maybe I think, no, we, we don't have it. So we never used MX10. So because of that, this class was stripped away, was purged by Tailwind whenever we built the, um, the, the compiled our assets. But maybe you want to add this class. So let's do that now. Uh, before you'd have to create uh, an asset file inside your style sheets and then link it up. And but now there's a simple command. I'll go. I'll just write bin rails generate uh, avo tail um, yes tailwind uh, install. Okay. Okay. It's tailwind CSS. Perfect. Okay, so what did it do? So it created the Avo Tailwind, Tailwind CSS file. So it's actually this one right here, right? Which is similar with this one, which Rails provided when we installed uh, and specified that we want to use Tailwind uh, by default. So then it appended to proc file. So it appended this Avo CSS job, which actually runs something similar like Avo Tailwind CSS watch. So it's, uh, it's similar to this one, but it watches different things, different files. So it will watch this file. Uh, and then uh, it ejected the head, um, the head partial, and it added the um, um, CSS file. So it basically added a style sheet link tag, avo tailwind CSS to, to it. And now all I'm going to do is close up this, uh, this uh, process and run bin dev again. Okay, this dev, this is an alias of mine, but you can run bin dev, no worries. And now you can see that it started web, it started CSS, and it also started Avo CSS. So it picked up from the proc file this new command, which will take this Avo Tailwind CSS and build this Avo Tailwind CSS file, right? So you'll see these are pretty much similar, but if I go this built up files, but if I go to Avo Tailwind and say, body uh, background red and make this important this will rebuild uh, the avo css file and now if i go at the end well we should see let's search for red body background red important cool and now if i refresh the page we'll see that the that the background uh, the, the background uh, rule was applied to the body. So we have now like the red uh, background, whatever we put in. But it also, if we look here, it also added this margin X uh, class that we wanted. Of course, it's overridden because we have maybe other rules inside. But if we go into the logo again, and instead of margin X, I add a hash, a, um, an exclamation sign, this will make it important. And now if I refresh the page, this MX has been marked as important. So now uh, Avo CSS Tailwind actually goes and looks at this, uh, at this file, picks up all the rules and also uses your Tailwind config to strip away, to purge away the classes that are not used, but keep the ones that you use. So basically because we have logo inside our views of our partials, it will it will go and uh, use this rule content app views and something else and then uh, we'll strip out this MX uh, 10 class that we used so this is how easy it is to uh, start using uh, tailwind classes in your other instance so now basically whatever you want to to add maybe you want to add a, like a custom um, a custom tool or a custom field and you want to use uh, tailwind classes that we haven't used you can do that now Coolio. Now let's go and check out the JavaScript. Let's see, where were we? So the docs, perfect. We have everything in the docs. You can check it out. It's the same thing that 
I, I told you about. So let's use import map to add some JavaScript. So I'm going to exit this, these files and just say rails new rails seven import map. Uh, it doesn't really matter what database we use. CD rail seven import map and just open the code editor. Perfect. And now if I run, um, oh, okay, CD rail seven import map. And now if I run the server, I get this new rails app again. Let's install, sorry, let's install Avo using a simple template. And I'm going to start the server. Now if I go to Avo, again, I have a new Avo instance. And I'm going to switch to the console here. So now we are using this import map configuration, which is default in Rails 7. So it means that we are not compiling any assets, but we are just uh, import maps will just serve them to the browser and browser knows how to import them and how to use them. So let's, um, so we have Avo, let's add our own assets. Let's add our own JavaScript assets. So I'll run this new command, bin rails, um, generate Avo JavaScript install. Perfect. And what did this do? So it created a new JavaScript file, avocustom.js. So now if I go into app JavaScript, I had this application JS, which imported some things. Now I have this new Avo custom JavaScript file, right? So it just console, uh, console logs something from, from the JavaScript. Now it ejected the HTML, the head uh, partial again, like it did with the previous command, and it added this import map tags. And um, uh, it did something else. So it, it appended to import map config, import map config, it added this Avo custom uh, as an entry point. So we had, we had application as an entry point, and now we have JS uh, Avo custom as a, as a new entry point. So now this, uh, because it's an entry point, we can reference it using uh, JavaScript import map tags. So now if I go and refresh the page, I get this high from Avo custom JS. So now we have full control of JavaScript inside Avo. So we can do, we can even like uh, console log the window, sorry, the window. Okay. And, uh, we even have access to stimulus, which is the actual stimulus JS application that we use here. So we'll, we'll see the controllers and everything else. Yeah. So this is, this was pretty easy. So we just ran one command, everything was set up for us. And now we have, um, custom JavaScript control. Cool. Uh, now this was for import map. So where are we with the documentation? If we go back up, so we did this, uh, we did tailwind and now let's try prop, uh, now let's try ES build. So import maps, JS build with ES build. So again, I'm going to exit and create a new app. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So rails new uh, rails seven. Uh, ES build, and I'm just going to specify JavaScript ES build. So this is using the new JS bundling for Rails, and you can select ES build, rollup, or Webpack. We have a template for ES build. If you use rollup, rollup, or Webpack, please set up um, send a PR towards us. We'd love to have this community contribution. Cool. So I'm going to close this one and Tailwind CSS. And now CD rail seven, uh, ES build and the same things, the same thing here. Perfect. Now opening, open up in the code editor. Cool. So now because we used ES build, we have to check out this, uh, the install command because somewhere around here, uh, we need to add this. Uh, scripts um, property to our package.json. So now because we're using uh, ES build, we are basically installing uh, installing ES build using uh, yarn and this will compile the assets. So uh, it's using this build command, 
which actually takes everything inside JavaScript just at the root level. So these are the entry points. Actually, the, uh, application JS is the only entry point, and will uh, create um, in app assets build. So again, it will create the assets here, and the app will know to uh, how to to use it, right? And then um, we have a proc file. We have the, again the same server and the new JS uh, command, right? With yarn build and watch. And now if I run bin dev, it will start up these two. So now if I go back to, um, again, to localhost 3000, I have a blank Rails app. I'm going to close this and again, install Avo from this template file. Cool. Run bin dev and go back to Avo. So we have a new, brand new Avo installment. Perfect. But again, we want to add some JavaScript files, JavaScript, um, yeah, JavaScript files. So ES build, now we run a different generator, bin rails, uh, generate Avo JavaScript install, but we say bundler, oh, bundler ES build. Okay. So what did this command do? So it added a new custom JS file, Avo custom JS. So I'll go into JavaScript. So this is the Avo custom JS. And it exported the head and again, appended to the head, uh, the JavaScript include tag. So this uh, basically uses this new Avo custom uh, file and serves it to the, to the, um, to Avo, to whatever the application requests. So now, if I refresh the, the page, I get again, hi from Avo custom JS. So what it did was uh, the, where is it? The JS, uh, the JS command here in the proc file, uh, as I said, uses the build command in the package JSON. So this takes everything in the root level of this, the, of this directory. So application JS and Avo custom JS and compiles them down and adds them to the builds. So now I have access to the JavaScript once more using ES build. So it's not that difficult. Um, so what it ha basically happens is uh, we, we use your own asset pipeline to add new types of files, new types of assets to, to it. So um, go ahead, give it a try. These All of these assets are going to be compiled in production as well. Uh, because they will go into your regular asset pipeline. So if you're using ES build, you already have NPM installed and you're probably um, uh, installing things with Yarn. Um, if you don't, if you use import map, you can do that with Avo as well. So go ahead, check it out and uh, send us feedback about this feature.